somewhere on social media this week, I saw someone commenting that the most egalitarian place in the United States is the drive through at Taco Bell at 1 o'clock in the morning. The person who was making this comment said you could find a $200,000 Mercedes right behind a 1996 Monte Carlo that's never had the oil changed, and right behind them is a moped with three people on it. It, it probably is not necessarily wise in the context of a sermon to compare the gifts of heaven to the food that you might get at Taco Bell, but I do think there is some connection between these two things. This morning when we hear about Jesus sitting and watching people putting money into the treasury in the temple, there must surely have been rich people and poor people, old and young, famous and obscure people, some who came proudly, some who came sheepishly, some who came reluctantly. I come to think of it, that sounds like Taco Bell too, doesn't it? But seriously. It's an interesting idea of what it would be like to come before the presence of God. You may know that there are some Christian denominations that do their Sunday collection in exactly that way. Everybody lines up and comes up the aisle and puts whatever they're going to put into the basket at the front of the church. Everybody together, rather than sitting where they are and being served in a way, everyone comes to the altar. One wonders, though, in the case of the story from the gospel this morning, whether anyone would even have noticed the person who Jesus comments on had he not pointed her out, whether she would have been unnoticed and what she was doing would have been unremarked by everybody who saw her and what a loss that would be. <clears throat> in a way, it's, it's a shame that we hear these lessons normally during the season when we're working on the budget for the churches next year when we're trying to figure out how much everyone is going to give and what the, the church will be able to do with that money to keep its work going. There's really much more to it than that, though, and I think this morning it's useful that we hear it when we at St. Thomas's at least are on the downslope, the end of our annual giving campaign, and can look at perhaps what it is Jesus is saying that this person has given. And in fact, what we're hearing both in that lesson and in the Old Testament, about, Old Testament lesson about what it really means to give. In both cases, the widows are giving sacrificially. It's easier to see probably in the Old Testament lesson where the widow in that story has almost nothing left to live on. She's collecting a couple of sticks with which to co cook the last of what she's got so that she and her son can eat one more time before presumably they starve to death. It isn't difficult to see how she is being asked to give everything that she has against the promise of God's abundance that will follow it. But she can't see when she has to make that commitment. It would be easy to imagine that in the gospel story, the, the person is, is giving money the way we would do. You open up your pocket, your purse, you find a couple coins and you throw them in. But what was that money really to her except what stood between her and fear and danger, hunger and embarrassment, everything bad that might help happen to her in the world, all that was between her and that was a little tiny bit of money. So both have given sacrificially, we use that term all the time, but what we mean by it is giving in a way that really does endanger us in our lives in some way. How often do we imagine doing something similar? How often are we able even to imagine giving from what little we have rather than from how much we have? And yet that is what we are being called to do. We are being challenged by these two women in these stories. They are making a statement. Now we do this all the time. We make statements to God constantly. <clears throat> Sometimes we say, well, I'll give you this in exchange for that, quid pro quo with God. Sometimes we say, well, you owe me. Sometimes we say, well, I need proof. Once you prove to me that this is going to happen, then I will show how grateful I am in what I give you back. None of those is what the widows are doing in the story this morning. They are, to use the modern gambling expression, all in up front, before they have seen anything pay off for it, they're giving everything 
that they have. And so now that we are a little past our annual giving cycle, is the time for us to ask whether we are all in. Having made the commitment out of our abundance, are we willing to make the commitment out of what little we may have in other ways? Are we willing to truly trust in the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Are we willing to have no plan B? Are we willing to trust that God does indeed have something to deliver that will come in time? There is probably no better time to do this than today when we have a baptism. I mean, what can a baby offer to God? Baby's not going to write a check. Baby's not going to offer to mow the lawn at the church or serve on the, the, the stewardship committee or do any of the other things that we imagine that we do as a way of showing how committed we are. All a baby can do is say, I'm here. Are you willing to be that poor? as to say, I got nothing to offer except myself, here I am. That, dear friends, is what each one of us is called to do today. In a minute, we're going to recite these things that Father Clay is going to lead us to say. Do we renounce all the powers of this world? Well, a lot of that is our plan B, isn't it? That's exactly what Jesus is criticizing the people at the beginning of the story for doing, for exploiting people for the sake of their own wealth for doing things to make themselves look as, as, as pious and popular as possible. All of that, dear friends, is what we are called to give up. Are we called to trust entirely in God's goodness and mercy? We're going to say that in a minute, too. You're going to hear people say it. We all have said it at our baptisms, or it was said for us. Are we still willing to do it? Are we still able to do it? Are we able to be even just as a baby would be today, helpless before God, completely dependent, and yet confident that God has a plan, has abundant mercy to pour out on each one of us? We can't know what happened next in the gospel story any more than we can know what happens to the person in front of us or behind us in line at the drive through But at least today, we have a chance to stop and notice. Today, the person in front of us is committing herself to Christ. Are you ready to do that again? If so, then the time has come. Let us, with her, recommit, be all in. Bet on God this time. Amen.